Hey, hello, hello. In this video, I'd like to show more a little bit about this DIY server thing that I've presented previous, previous video. The idea is that I originally wanted to have all of my computers and the desk I'm speaking from transition to a container of sorts where I can manage heat, sound and dust easily. And as you may or may not have noticed, uh, there's quite the difference in between the four computers that are still on my desk and the seven computers that are in the DIY server. So very long story short, what happened is that the company I work for uh, decided that they wanted to go from towers, usual computers, to laptops. And in the process, they decided to get rid of 30 plus uh, computers all at once. So they decided to ask if any employees wanted some. I said yes and ended up with 25 of them. Gave seven to a friend and I'm still end up with a lot of uh, computers. So the idea is that I want to see about uh, managing heat, dust and noise, as I've said. But it's also going to be to nerd about uh, database replication, Kubernetes, CI, CDs and whatnot. It's outside of the scope of this video because I haven't gotten the computers to work just yet. In order to know if I'm on the right track for success with this project, I'm going to be comparing my DIY server to a giant pile of computers. Just putting them in a shelf and calling it a day. And to compare them and know if my solution is better, I'm going to be using four metrics. The first one is going to be the access. Can I turn on and off the computers easily? Can I plug in stuff without any headaches? The second one is going to be the price. Although I already have the computer cases as hand, I'm going to be using 50 euros per computer as a baseline to see where I'm at. Heat management, can I aggregate the heat and dump it outside of the room or is it going to end up fighting with the climatization for the control of the temperature of the room? Like is it going to be crazy noisy and expensive or am I going to be able uh, to have something that's viable? And lastly, uh, dust protection. I've got big problems with dust due to the presence of humans, pets, and living in Paris, all of which generate a lot of dust, dust which has been causing me trouble. So I'd like to see, with my solution, can I have something to control the dust? So those are the four metrics. For now, I haven't addressed all of them. I'm going to show you what's the current process, and in the next videos, I'll be addressing the next points. So what you're looking at here is the DIY server and its components. So the base of the structure is an IKEA shelf. I've reinforced the back of it with some additional wood to make it nice and rigid. So nothing will wiggle if I start uh, pushing it. And it's these custom shelf brackets that are holding the computers in place. They are highly customizable and the idea is that I've assembled a very simple structure using two of them, a very simple aluminum extrusion and these aluminum plates. So I really went for stuff that would be customizable and cheap because I'm going to be putting quite a few computers in the DIY server and I wanted the best uh, value per cost. So that's the, the idea. This here is a computer in its final assembled form ready to go into the DIY server. So obviously you can recognize this, the motherboard and the PSU, uh, but you've also got intermediary supports to fix everything onto the aluminum backplate. These are brackets, the kind of which you find in workshops and uh, whatnot and everything is screwed, bolted together to keep it uh, rigid. At the back is where you've got a bit of place for the cables. It's a bit compact, but everything does fit nicely. And here's probably where the HDD or SSD is going to fit, at least temporarily. Although I can, if I want to have a fixature of sorts to hold it uh, underneath, there is the place uh, to do so. The hardest part of all of this project was the 3D printed support that holds the motherboard onto the aluminum plate, which then fits into my DIY server. 
initially I tried to design it myself using Tinkercad and I went through quite a few processes measuring it by hand, by ruler and by caliper and it ended up being way too much work because the pieces are rather big and the tolerances are quite small. We're talking one millimeter max. So deciding that was too much work, I realized I could possibly use the back plates already existing in the computer cases. So this is normally in your computer case. You've got little screws uh, that hold the motherboard in your computer case. And it's held in place by rivets. So I had to drill, disassemble, uh, dremel everything that was uh, uh, too big to, to fit on my aluminum plates and you'd drill holes into the part that's in contact with the aluminum plate, screw everything together, put your motherboard on top and then put it in the DIY server. A huge amount of work. This is roughly two hours of work per computer. It did work and I did assemble a total of five computers that way. Here is one such example where you can see that I've uh, been able to successfully do so. You can even use the original screws of the computer case that way. But on all and for all, all of the work involved to assemble one of these was four hours of work and I still have 10 plus computers to go through. Way too much work. So I decided that I did in fact want a 3D printed backplate but this time went on the internet and do a double triple tech to see if there weren't some people that did in fact do the specifications or at least make them available and easy to to see and understand so one such user i'll link it on the in the video description on reddit i did so and on a3 pieces of uh, paper allowing me to check that everything was indeed uh, correct so with the exact dimensions and this time using um, Fusion 360 rather than Tinkercad, I was able to do a few more designs which were already very promising. So here's a few uh, failures. So the reason of failure for this one was because I tried to use the same screw that would go through the motherboard, the plastic support and the aluminum backplate all in one. So I ended up with the same tolerance issues I had previously. So back to the drawing board, yet another version, this one way more promising. It's got its own holes uh, that were allowed to fix, to be fixed onto the aluminum backplate. You then use the original computer case screws to fix the motherboard onto it. And this turned out to be a success, although I did do one last version, improved version, which I'm currently using which has got uh, chamfered holes on the support to allow the motherboard to be fixed with great ease. The same holes are showed previously and this time even text, just very simply stating front motherboard connections, front PCIe to make orientation super, super easy on the first try. And this turned out to be a great success. I even did an ATX micro ATX format as I do have to deal with both. And the assembled result resembles this, where you can see the 3D printed support and the motherboard comfortably fitting on top. So there's also this piece here that holds the PCU that I'm going to present just now. But this works and it rounded down the amount of time required for one of these shelves to a little bit over one hour down to the initial four hours. So a big gain in uh, time. I encountered similar issues with uh, power supply unit uh, support. I started doing a first version where I did have the dimensions at first, although I forgot to put in the holes so I couldn't use uh, those. But they also had a lot of support that had to be built in, which I then had to remove, which was additional work after the, the print. And I ended up designing this version, which doesn't require any support whatsoever to be removed, has the required holes, and ended up being so confident with them that I printed quite a few. Uh, but they work, so um, this is what I'm currently using for almost all of the power supplier units, plus a few 
working prototypes. So a problem that I'm still dealing with is the HDDs the computers came with. They range in between 500 gigs and one uh, terabyte. And I did attempt to, well, first of all, design a small prototype to make sure the dolls were correctly aligned, and then design this apparatus to try and have the um, HDDs fit onto the um, a back plate. So you'd fix the HDD on top, screw it, and then through these two holes it would be screwed into the aluminum backplate. Honestly, I'm not satisfied at all with this um, solution. It's very clunky, it's just asking for, for trouble. So instead I bought a 10 pack of 120 gigabyte SSDs turned out to be reasonably cheap and I do know that it's going to boost those old computers like crazy. But that said, I still also would like to do a NAS. So the NAS is going to be outside of the scope of this video, but most of the computers that I've disassembled came with these um, HDD shelves of sort, caddies, I don't know how to call them, and they do fit um, HDDs really nicely. It's almost as if they were designed to do so. Anyway, and I'm thinking of probably taking a few and putting them under the aluminum backplate and then linking them to the computer directly. I, don't, I still haven't figured the details just yet. What I am going to do now is a bit of a makeshift solution where I'm going to take these SSDs, use double-faced sticky glue and um, sticky tape and put them onto the PSUs. It's not the most elegant solution, but it's going to work for my needs for the moment. Here are the different steps involved in the disassembly of a computer. I do apologize, some parts of the footing are going to look a bit weird. I had the bitrate set a bit wrong on the recording, so some parts will look like some AI had an aneurysm during the recording. Sorry about that. Anyway, the disassembly is really straightforward. If I see a screw, I unscrew it, and you'll see me vacuum a lot. This was by far the cleanest of all of the computers that I've cleaned. A lot of them were a massive mess requiring a very extensive uh, dusting. I'm interested in all of the cables, the motherboard, the PSU, the CPU, obviously the HDD, anything that I can disassemble, I'll see if I can uh, keep it. Once I'm pleased with all of the pieces that I've disassembled, I lay them in front of the camera just so you can see what I've uh, gotten. Sadly, the USB cables were completely busted, so no keeping those. Because these computers are so old, one thing I do systematically with all of them is that I disassemble the heatsink and I remove the old thermal paste to apply new thermal paste. This one was also kind of okay, but most of those that I've disassembled, it was just crusty, crumbling, and honestly not doing much for the cooling. This one, though, surprisingly had grime in the USB ports, so I had to get rid of that too. At this point, I can start drilling the holes into the aluminum backplate. So I drill one hole for the motherboard holder and one hole for the PSU holder in order to screw them partially in place and keep them in place. This in turn allows me to make the other holes very easily. It's also very tolerant to holes not being quite aligned. It will work just fine. So deburring all of the holes to make sure they're nice and smooth, no sharp edges, and I also vacuum continuously during the whole process because this happens to be my room and I do not want to step onto sharp objects. The vacuuming is done through this very compact, cheap vacuum cleaner that I got off Amazon. I already had a bracket system pre-assembled, so this is what you're seeing me drill holes through. I drill a hole through both of the support and the back plate in order to ensure that the holes are perfectly aligned and the screws are going to hold everything together correctly. And now I can put the motherboard and the power supply unit onto their 3D printed supports, screw everything in place using screws that I've gotten from all of those computer cases that I've disassembled, 
plug in everything together and voila, it's ready to go. Inserting the freshly assembled computer is as easy as getting close to it. Remove all of the mess that I forgot to remove previously for the video and very simply insert the, the computer. I mean, this is really one of the reasons why I assembled this right, because I wanted everything to be very easy for maintenance, easy to put computers in, easy to take them out. And as you can see, it's very straightforward. And voila, thanks a lot for watching the video up to this point. Um, as you can see, far from done with this project, I've still got a lot of things to, to do. And I'm going to be showing them in the following videos as I get to, to doing them. Once again, thank you very much and bye-bye.